apartment name equal to, well, equal to something, equal to whatever we're changing it to. Now, do we want to change every department's name to that? Of course not. So we have a where clause that says where, and again, same sort of logic as a delete. Which one do we want to change? Well, we want to change a specific one. We want to change based on the department ID. So our update statement is going to look like this. If we had more columns that we wanted to update in this table, we would have a comma, and then have column equals value, comma, column equals value, and so on down the line. Actually, column equals question mark, probably. All right, so let's go and implement this part of it. So I'll go here. And I'll go and edit this again. And I'll put in the update statement. Update department. Set department name equals question mark. Where department ID equals question mark. Next. Finish. Now, I want to be able to enable editing. Notice that option wasn't there before. The grid view is smart enough to know that, hey, you can't edit or delete from this if there is no SQL behind it to actually do the edit updating of the database. Now that we put in a SQL for it, we can enable editing. And now we have two little links, an edit and a delete. So now when we go and run this, Now when we go and run this, we get this, and I can click edit, and I can now get, instead of a label, I get a text box. And I can go in and type in information technology and click update. And now that says information technology. Accounting services. And it goes and updates it. Now notice, I'm pretty sure I made the department name a required field. So if I try to go in and save something, I guess I can. I guess I didn't make a required field. I should have, though. If I go in the database and make that a required field, try to edit something and I try to get rid of its name, I also get an ugly error that we'll want to change. So let's back up, all right? Let's back up and let's talk about what this does for us and let's talk about the things that we will still need to do in this example.
first thing is, is to enable deleting or editing on a grid view, you first have to define the SQL to do that. The SQL for the delete will almost always look the same. It will be delete from the name of the table where whatever your primary key is equals question mark. If you had a multiple part primary key, you'd probably have several question marks. The update statement, update table, set, and then you have a pairs of column names and values. Column name equals value, comma, comma na column name equals value, comma, column name equals value. And then again, you'll likely have a where clause that will say where the primary key equals some parameter. Once you've added the SQL to the SQL data source, you need to go in and enable editing and deleting uh, the grid view. Again, the two components here, one pulling the data and actually doing the database operations, the one being the user interface. Now, there's some things that are very good about this, right? Without much work at all, I was able to make a simple edit and delete. However, we're, we're still not really production ready, right? For one thing, let's, let's talk about all the things that we're not production ready on. For one thing, it doesn't confirm when you say you want to go and delete it. That's kind of a big problem. Secondly, it displays ugly error messages if anything goes wrong, and that's not a good thing. Finally, it doesn't confirm when we go to delete. It just allows us to go and delete without asking us, are you sure you want to delete? And that's probably not good either. One more thing with the update, or the edit rather. Notice what happens when I edit. When I click the edit, this doesn't change because the assumption is that you don't want to change the primary key. But notice that the department name on that row changes from being a label to being a text box that you can type in. That's the default behavior. Anything that's editable that can be changed will get changed from a label to a text box. However, that's not always a good thing, right? We probably don't always want text boxes. In the case of some things, we probably want drop downs instead. So that's another sort of flaw in the default behavior. I hesitate to call these flaws, though, even though I just did, because the idea is this is a framework. It's never meant to have done everything for you. This gave you a pretty easy way to get a head start and allow editing and deletion to be on this grid view. Yeah, I'm going to have to go and code some stuff, but that's okay, because it did a good part of the job for me. And now I'm happy to code the stuff that I need to code. So, let's go and let's address these things one at a time. Yes, go ahead. Hmm? Um, <clears throat> if department ID had not been included in that grid view, um, would you still be able to, your where clause, to say where department ID equals? No. You'd have to include the department ID in the data source you don't have to display the department ID in the grid view. Okay, so if we didn't display it, then we could still use that same as... Yeah, we could still use it just by not displaying it, but we would have to select it for the grid view, right? And that's not uncommon, right? I mean, we're, you know, I can go in, just to demonstrate, and I can go in and edit columns here, and I can get rid of that department ID column, but I'm getting rid of it from the grid view. It still is in the select statement. If I look at the select statement here, the select statement still says 
select star from department. So it's getting the department ID and the department name. And so when I run this, I can go in and click at it. And behind the scenes, it knows that the, the, the department ID is just not displaying it on the screen. So, so that information is on the client side? It's no, just not, not the client screen. side, it's on the server side. But isn't the thing that's going back the department ID? Isn't what thing that's going back the department <laughs> ID? The URL. Where, do you, where, where did well, you see a URL? If you were to edit that. Uh-huh. So it's going back to the server when you click update? It's going back to the server when I click update. And it knows that I want to update this row. The server knows that that row is associated with department ID 3, let's say. There's probably nothing on the client side that ties this to department three. If I look and do a view source. There's really nothing on there, can you see, that relates to this being that particular. Okay, so it's, it's that row somehow. Yeah, it knows it knows that that row, it knows the keys associated with that row, the value of the key associated with that row, right. All right, first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of the ugly error messages. So for the first time in a while, we're going to get back to coding, right? Because almost everything we've done for the past while, I don't know if we've done really any coding, all right? Because the framework was enough, right? We, we had enough functionality in the framework to do what we wanted to do, all right? Now, though, the framework is falling short. I urge you not to be spoiled and complain about doing this coding, all right? Otherwise, I'll have to bore you with stories about back when I was a kid writing in pre.net ASP, how we had to do all of this stuff for ourselves. And we didn't have a framework that did 60% of your work, let's say, or whatever percent. And you don't want to hear that, believe me. All right? Complain some more and I'll bring punch cards in and we'll, we'll talk <laughs> about those. All right? So, what we want to do is we want to put some code somewhere to handle the errors ourselves. All right? Remember, any time you use a framework, there's like two things that, 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 you, that, that you can do. You can let the framework do everything, all right, in which case it's going gonna, it's gonna to do what it does, all right? That's a totally nonsensical statement. Of course it's going to do what, what it does, right? What it does, maybe this is a better way to put it. What it does may or may not be adequate for the job that you're, you're trying to do. All right? In a production environment, it probably isn't going to be 100% adequate. What you need to do then is you need to write some custom code to do what you want it to do instead of doing what the framework wants to do. So, have no mistake, you know, this is your project. This is your code. So, if the framework does something a certain way, it's not an excuse to say, well, that's the way .NET did it. Well, fine, that's the way .NET did it, but it's not good, and it's up to you to go and change it. So this is one of the cases where what the framework does isn't really industrial strength, all right? The error message is that you get when you try to delete a department that has employees associated with it, it is not acceptable. So what do we do? We take it in our own hands and we do some custom things. Now, one of the things that we can do is we can put some custom code in. There's other things that we can do as well related to the data grid, or I'm sorry, the grid view. We'll come to those later. All right, so I'm going to get the code behind file for this page. All right. Okay. 
Actually, I'm going to go and click on This actually shows up slightly different in C Sharp. This shows me all the controls that exist on the page. I'm going to pick SQL Data Select. SQL Data Source. I'm almost sure that you can see that. I'll do it this way. can't see the list of functions available and that's annoying me. Let's do this. This shows us all the events that happened that we can write code for. All right. We are interested in one of these events in this case. If you notice, there's two events that look similar, and you can almost probably guess the difference based on what they're called. One is called a deleting event, and one is called a deleted event. One of them happens as it's being deleted, or actually before it's being deleted. That's a deleting event. And the deleted event occurs after the delete has completed. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, and I'm going to put code in the deleted event.
must be a way to get to see what these definitions are. I wanted to get the exact signature of the function, what this guy gets. These events are events that get fired off in the framework when certain things happen, and they get past certain arguments. What we have to do is we have to make sure that this guy gets called when you've deleted something from that data source. So let's go here, and on that data source, we need to specify... deleted equal and put in the name of that function. So after we've deleted something from that data source, it's going to call this function, the deleted. Now what we want to do is we want to test to see if there were any errors. So I will say if test to see if the exception is null. If there's no exception, that means that it worked. So I'm going to want to display on the screen an indication saying that the delete worked. Or maybe I don't want to do anything, but for now we'll display a message. Otherwise, it didn't work. And we want to display an error message. So I'm going to go up here onto my GUI. And I'm going to add a label up here, and I'll call it 
label results. There's no exception. No exception means that, hey, um, everything went okay. The deletion worked. Remember, because this is a deleted event, this fires off after the deletion has already occurred. So we know if it worked or not. And if there's no exception object created, an exception object created mean, means that there was an error. So if there's no exception object created, that is, that exception object is null, then we don't have an error. So I can say label results dot text equals deletion successful. can say deletion failed. There may be employees for this department. we want to do is we want to let the framework know that we've handled this problem, right? Because remember, who can handle exceptions? We can handle them or the framework can handle them. There's no need for both of us to handle them. So if we've handled this exception, we want to tell the framework that we have handled this exception. And the way we do it is by saying e dot exception handled equals That saying, effectively, hey, we got this one. So the framework doesn't need to worry about it. If you remember before, prior to us having any code here, whenever there was a problem, the framework displayed the big ugly error message. All right? We don't want the big ugly error message, so we're writing code to handle it. Well, we have to tell the framework, hey, we have successfully handled this, Otherwise, it's going to go and display the big ugly error message. So, let's go and try this and let's see what we get. Oops. Uh -oh. When I was playing around, I put in an unselecting attribute here by 